them. Two years ago, James Charles was one of the most popular names when discussing the YouTube mainstream. Oh my goodness, James Charles. This is exactly what I wanted to do on my stream today, guys. Woo. James Charles' career is basically dead. Why? Question mark. You want to know why? Let me explain to you why his career died. There was this viral video once that went out by this guy named Papa Gut. I got 35 million views. Okay, now what was that video? What was the video, the most viral TikTok video that I ever made? It was me reacting to a twerk of James Charles. But in my reaction, I reacted by twerking back. So he twerked and I said, 15 million views, I could do it better. Threw it back. Ratioed him so hard that he removed those videos. The real thing. <clears throat> this is a real thing that happened. It's actually true. I got a video, 35 million views, twerked so hard that it he removed, he removed his video. <laughs> It was crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. I'm a legend. So I think that's why his career died. Because, like, how do you get out twerked by a fat guy? Doesn't make sense. He was playing Minecraft with PewDiePie, hosting his own reality wow. TV show, all while his personal YouTube channel was clearing well over 100 million views per month. Easy, me too. However, over the last year, things have changed significantly. He's lost over 1.5 million subscribers, equivalent to losing more than 100,000 subs per month. Wait, how many subscribers does he have, though? That's crazy. He's lost over 1.5 million subscribers. What does James Charles have? Like, how many does he have on YouTube? That's nuts. It's equivalent to losing more than 100,000 subs per month. His average viewership per video has declined from well over 10 million to a little over 1 million. Or while his Twitter hasn't hey, I'll still take it. seen any positive follower growth during the same time period. You might say that James Charles has become the poster child victim of internet cancellations. Wow. However, we should use the term victim lightly as the death of his career has certainly been self-inflicted and could have easily been avoided with his terrible management of controversy and subsequent career decline having begun back in early 2019 after James Charles would mention that he was most attracted to straight men. I think it would have been better if he didn't mess around with those kids that were not of a good age. Um, I don't remember all the specifics. Okay, What I will say is that it seemed like he consistently would get into these debacles debacles uh, issue, he'd consistently have these issues um, where he would talk to a fan and then they happen to be like 16 when he was like 21 or 20 or 22 and, or 15. And he wouldn't check age. Big, oh, sorry, guys. I'll check the age. And then he would like consistently not check age. I mean, that's the, that's the biggest issue. Do From what I remember, I don't... James Charles, what he was doing was gross. I think, and I probably have to educate myself more on it, but it seems like it's like, okay, so it seemed to be like 16 year olds when he was like 20, 21, maybe 22, which is really inappropriate. I don't think that that instantly qualifies for a predator. I think the biggest issue is like he wasn't checking the ages. It's still really wrong. It's and like it's 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 inappropriate, um, but I wouldn't call this person. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering some of the facts and the information, but let's keep watching. Maybe we'll get that here. One boy who is straight. Love that for you. That's easy. It's you, it's easier than you would think. This statement resulted in the first contributing factor to his eventual downfall after a fan would post this photo of James Charles and another unknown individual to Twitter, questioning James as to whether or not this was potentially a new relationship. The unknown person in the image was later revealed to be Gage Gomez, a straight Instagram model who'd been talking to James he looks a little Gage Gomez, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> More like Gay Gomez. Ah, got him. Came to five months in the lead up to Coachella 2019, where this photo had been taken. With Gage being straight, James would respond to the Twitter post by stating, Nope, unfortunately, I am still very single. This boy played me for months on end and is a disgusting con artist. I'm thankful I had my friends with me to protect me. <laughs> you think he really thinks that? He probably tried to date a straight guy because he thought it was hot, and then he was like, nah, no thanks. Maybe the guy did kind of like suss around with him a little bit and for, for some money aspect. But okay, I mean, as long as they're in an age range, I don't really give a shit. It's a, it's like a weird dating dance. Is all it is. It's like exploring whether a dude's gay or not, and like putting your in, like val like you're tr trying to date that guy. So even if he let him on and he got money out of him, I don't really care. Every single bit of misfortune that would occur in James Charles' life from here on out can be traced back to this specific tweet. As after making it, Gage, the Instagram model involved, would create a YouTube video stating that James pressured him into meeting up despite knowing that he was straight. He then started to begin. I mean, okay, but then you met up with him even though you knew he was gay and wanted to fuck her. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things where it's like he really wanted to pressure me into hanging out. Okay, well, 
How old are you, Gage Gomez? Let me see if I can find his age. Let's see. Twenty. He's 23. James Charles is also 23. So, like, another person your age was like, oh, I'm gay and I want to hang out. And you're like, you know, he knows I'm straight. Which means that you know that he wants to fuck you. And then you're trying to hang out with him. My understanding is he said he was bisexual. Don't know if that's true or not. But like you can't be the victim in every. You, you can't just not have autonomy of, of your, your person. You could, you, if you, especially since he's like, yeah, I want to hang out with you. I'm gay. Okay. Well, you know he wants to fuck you. So if you don't want to do that, be like, no, nah, no thanks. But it seems like you were kind of like exploring your sexuality. Maybe that information is incorrect. But I, I think I remember that because people in chat are saying that he was bisexual or he was exploring his sexuality. I think I remember that. But I could be wrong. But I'm just saying. Like, you, oh, he's pressuring me. Okay, what does that mean, motherfucker? What oh, oh, are you? Can you? You can't say no. I know that he might have more followers than you. That just because there's a power dynamic, just because a power, power dynamic exists, doesn't mean that it's instantly abuse. James didn't say if you don't. If he said if you don't hang out with me, I'm gonna ruin your fucking life. Then that's an abusive power dynamic. If he's just like, hey sister, I want to suck your penis. That's not. That's not an abusive power dynamic. And putting a little bit of pressure on me uh, of getting to know me, like disregarding the okay. fact that I told him I was straight. Because as you all know, this person. So then, why did you get to know him? Why did you want? If you knew he wanted your your bussy, why even talk to him? Ninety nine point nine, maybe even one hundred percent of the time, goes after um, heterosexual men. And while this, and you knew that too. So like, yeah, I knew he goes after heterosexual men. And he, uh, oh, oh my god, oh my goodness, you know, I went to this. Uh, I went to the dog pound. And there was this dog, and the guys were like, this dog loves to hump the fuck out of people's life. Oh, no, he likes to pee on people. He likes peeing on people. Really? All the time. Every single... 100% of the people who walked in there, he pees on them. That's incredible. Can I walk in there? Sure. Oh, my God, he's peeing on me. I never could have expected this. This video hardly warranted a response and could have easily been the end of the drama. James made yet another mistake. After Gage would post a video explaining his side of the story, James would take to Twitter with a classic multi-paragraph notes app tweet, trying to explain why he was in the right, beginning with the good old, I will address this now and never again. And if we learned anything from the only JS video, it's that addressing or responding to criticism in a serious manner leads to almost certain career suicide over the long run. That's not, th that's not true. <laughs> that's really just not true. You can, you can respectfully, uh, JS is a miserable example of everything. You can respectfully say, hey, I messed up or I did this thing or this thing happened. And I'm not talking about it again. You can respond to criticism. Like this whole argument of like, don't respond to criticism. It's just so weird. I think it's a little cowardice. But okay. As audience love to berate an influencer who they know they can get a response or reaction from. For example, on that very same day that James Charles would respond to the criticism with his classic I take responsibility notes app tweet, this video will be posted to YouTube titled James Charles hitting on straight guys for 17 minutes, which might not have ever been posted if James had simply ignored the drama in the first place. Or maybe it would have been, I don't know. This 21 picture is really cute. Although that should have been me instead of your girlfriend, but we can let that slide. <laughs> the universal. Oh my God. Oh my God. How horrible is that? Can I give you, this is, maybe this is too anecdotal, but this is for me. My wife has a gay friend, a gay best friend, and me and him flirt. I don't want his, I don't want to fuck him. I don't know. It feels good. I feel like straight men are like, are, that are comfortable with gay people. They're, they're chill with flirting. And if you weren't chill with it, leave or say, don't do that. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs> like, I, I like everything is so, oh my God, James Shaw was targeting straight men. These people, these people are fucking weird. The reporting of the drama led to a heightened awareness about James's tendency to pressure straight men into hanging out and some pressure them because these people are fucking like Whoa. these straight men have no other option. Oh my god. Subsequently, others would come forward stating that they had a similar experience. This oh was the no. reason behind the infamous oh target no. cancellation attempt, literally oh only no. two weeks after the drum with Gage, which we discussed just prior. Oh my god, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again. How did you trick the straight man? What did you do? Did he get him like super drunk to the point where he couldn't like consent and fucking rape them? What does that mean? Trick a straight man. Bro, if you can trick a dude, a dude into being gay, he's not. Sh if you can trick a straight man into being gay, he's not straight. I'm just letting you know, okay? <laughs> oh, he tricked me. I, did, uh, I didn't know it was James Charles. I didn't know he had a pe. What did he do? While at Hardy's birthday party, James Charles would mention that he found the waiter attractive. You were talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight. Your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. Oh no, who cares? As a result, Jack Bro, you know what's crazy here? Oh, two friends talking about fucking a guy who's taken? <gasps> oh, 
that happens all the time. I'm like so confused. It's Tati. It's not. It's not. What if he did a sissy hypno without my permission? Then that's that might be sexual assault. If he sissy hypnos you, if he does like sissy hypno porn, that I don't know if it works. Bro, people gossip all the time to people. I don't care. LOL, it's Sam the Buster from John Howie. Oh my God, LMAO, how are you? Haha, sorry about last night. You're very attractive. It's all good, very flattering. Love that. I did not think you were 19. Oh my God, I am too. So what's really interesting here, check this out. This is my extrapolation from this. The person messaged James Charles first because James Charles doesn't know who they are. How are you going to say he tricked me into, into, into hitting on me as a straight guy when you DM the motherfucker first? Oh, I DM him first and then he tricked me. Oh. He goes, LOL, it's Sam Buster from John Howie, which means he didn't know, James Charles didn't know who it is. And then James is like, oh, I know who you are now. Cool. So James is probably like, hey, hit me up. I'm gay. And he's like, I'm going to hit this guy up. What are you? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, this is so stupid. Holy shit, I, I, okay. James will find the waiter on Instagram before messaging him the following day. The waiter, whose real name was Sam Cook, mentioned- Who cares? Sam reached, reached out to him first. Oh no, Sam definitely didn't want to have that interaction. What does this say As here? a result, James will find- Oh, he messaged him first. Oh my god. And the waiter on Instagram before messaging him the following day. The waiter, whose real name was Sam Cook, mentioned that he was a bi-curious, subsequently meeting up and making out with James Charles for about an hour. Oh, well, that's definitely very curious. He actually, Maybe he did do sissy hypno on him. He invited me out to his hotel. At that time, I was by curious. I had never done anything with a guy before. And okay, well, I, that's why you're by curious. I was curious. I said, yes. Okay. We ended up making out for around an hour. Afterwards, okay. the two would part ways. However, a few okay. weeks later, James would offer to fly Sam to LA, which Sam denied as after his first experience with James, Sam had decided that he was straight. Okay, who cares? Hey, so I took some time to think about it. And honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm straight, but I've really enjoyed talking and getting to know you. You maybe, and maybe that confused me. I don't want you to think I'm leading you on or using you because I'm pretty sure that's happened to you in the past. If you don't want me to fly down or don't want anything to do with me, I completely understand. But I really enjoy getting to know the person you are. Uh, I guess I'm just a little confused. When I first messaged you asking, you told me that you were bisexual right away. Then I turned out not really knowing. Okay, oh, whatever. I, is this supposed to be problematic? Sissy Hypno, true. Uh, James would offer to fly Sam to LA, which Sam denied as after his first experience with James, Sam had decided that- Um, He actually doesn't deny it. If you look at this, it says, if you don't want me to fly down or, or don't want anything to do with me, I completely understand. It actually is, it seems to him saying that I'm not gay, but I still want you to fly me out, but I don't want to fuck you if that's the reason you're going to fly me out. So James Charles would probably naturally say, ah, oh, never mind. I'm not going to fly you out because I wanted to put my wee wee in you. Yeah. He was straight. He wanted to fly me out to LA. That kind of freaked me out because at that point, I I was pretty sure I was straight. Resulting in James pressuring Sam further. He oh, still he went on to say he thought I was bisexual or gay and attracted to him when I told him different. As a result. Wait, what? You to say I was pretty sure I was straight. He wanted to fly me out Sam to LA. Is this what we're talking about? Where he said, you told me this is the pressure. If this is what the pressuring, he, the pressuring he's saying, shut the fuck up. I'm so, it's so weird. Like, what does pressuring mean to you? Like, yeah, he wanted to still hang out and fuck me. Okay. So just say no. Ass assert your boundary of no, I'm not gay. Fuck off. I don't know what to tell you. I guess it's just a little confused. When we first started talking, you said you were bisexual. If this is pressuring you, then you're a baby. I don't know what to tell you. But this is the message he's showing. So I'm going to assume this is the pressuring the pressuring he's talking about. Okay. Sam further. He still went on to say he thought I was bisexual or gay and attracted to him when I told him different. As a result of Tati publicizing okay. the drama in which James Charles looked like the bad guy, James lost 3.1 million subscribers over the course of a week in the process setting what? a YouTube record for the most subscribers ever oh. lost in 24 hours, 1.26 million, which he still holds to this day. However, in spite of losing 3 million subscribers, this certainly wasn't the end for James Charles. He'd gained around 2 million of them back after posting a pretty cool, calm, collected response, showing that Tati was just being an immature child uh okay oh that's her in the okay, he was clearly I mean, trying to drag his name down for her own personal gain as a result over the long run the heat was taken off james and instead focused on tati giving james free exposure with fairly minimal downside okay. subsequently his average viewership would triple from 50 million per month to 150 million per Whoa. month over the following year however there was one thing that hadn't been forgotten by his audience james charles still had a tendency to respond or defend himself in the face of criticism which if anything had been amplified by his multiple 
You bet. We've already proved that it went well for him when he responded to himself, even though earlier you said you shouldn't, but okay. Sponsors and apologies whilst involved in the tidy Westbrook drama. Even more insidiously, the fact that James Charles had gotten off scot-free might have given him a layer of false confidence, reinforcing that a public apology was a simple ticket to get out of drama, whilst in almost okay. any other situation, a public social media apology generally hurts the creator's reputation over the long run, as James would come to discover when the- Well, it's because most people who apologize aren't being genuine about their apology. They don't care. That's what the problem is. At that point, if you don't actually care, people are going to realize it and be like, mm, this is a bullshit apology. Real drama will begin in early 2021. I'm not physically attracted to older guys, which sucks. Like, I would date, like, the absolute youngest, like, 18, 19 that looks a little bit older, or, like, 24 that, like, has a young personality. Okay. To say that this- That by itself isn't really that bad. It's a little sussy. Okay. This clip aged like milk would be a colossal sized understatement. Yeah, yeah. Mentioning on the impulsive podcast that he was attracted to younger boys would come back to haunt James when in February 2021. I don't think he said younger boys. Before. One, a user by the name of Isaiah13 made a post on Twitter stating, if you're going to text someone, make sure you know their age. He added me on Insta. My Insta has my TikTok, which shows my age at James Charles with an mm. attached photo of his TikTok description showing that this person who James had been texting was only 16 years old. Very sussy. Hold on a second. James, when in February 2021. February 2021. Okay, so James is like 20 or 21. Mm, see, this is one of those conversations I have. Um, James Charles' birthday. We're in 2022. Oh, are we in 20? What? How? Where are we? Wait, was, how old was he, 22? Impulsive podcast that he was attracted to younger boys would come back to haunt James when in February 2021. What year are we in? Oh, I think we're in year tw like 20, fucking 24. I'm like fucking dumb as shit. Okay, so he's talking to a 16-year-old at 22. Yeah, see, that's inappropriate. A user by the name of Isaiah13 made a post on Twitter. And it was very easy due diligence to do. Stating, if you're going to text someone, make sure you know their age. He added me on Insta. My Insta has my TikTok, which shows my age at James Charles, with an attached photo of his TikTok description, showing that this person who James had been texting was only 16 years old. Isaiah, the individual who created this Twitter post, then took to his TikTok, explaining that things got heated after James would add him on Snapchat. Who was the lying person? Wasn't there people who came forward and lied? I'm not saying that this was this person. This is very inappropriate. And like, it's, I don't even think you really have the ability to be like, oh, I was just, oh, oh, um, I didn't know his age. Well, if it's in his TikTok, you didn't do due diligence. But even if you didn't, that's still your fault. I wonder where James Charles is from. Um, where was he born? He was born in New York. So age against 17 there. So he doesn't even get that excuse. James Charles snapped me on Snapchat. He added me back. I've always looked up to him, so I was excited to get his message back. I'm gonna post proof of it right now. This is the notification that I got when he Snapchatted me first. And just for further proof, he deleted. Show me his deck, bro. Deleted the chat. I don't know what he deleted, but that's me opening his Snapchat. I went into the bathroom, and I guess he saw the bathroom light, so he started making. He was pleasuring himself the whole time and wanted nude pics of my body. The conversation okay. very sexual, and it made me really uncomfortable. And I'll okay. post some of the stuff that he sent me now. You can't see it because it's blurry because I took it on my iPad because I don't want him to see that I screenshotted it. Okay. But I'll post it right now. Send me a vid where you, like, put your phone down in the shower and record hands-free flexing and showing off muscles and hair. T okay. Uh, I bet you can make me finish just by flexing and showing off your hair. What a weird fetish. Uh, even without taking out your dick. Okay. Gross. He proceeded to send me explicit pictures of his body. Which, so, which is followed by Isaiah stating that James Charles had also tried to pressure him into sending inappropriate photos. So after sending me that first picture of his body, um, explicitly he sent me multiple after that, and I'll post them now. I was getting really uncomfortable, so I told him my age. I told him I'm 16. Meanwhile, he's 21. He's a grown oh, he's 21, man. man. And then he proceeds to say, oh, but I didn't even get to see the, yeah, meaning my body. Oh, afterwards, he didn't go, oh shit, really? And after telling him, like, no, like, I'm not going to send it to you, he kept on asking. Did he record? Oh, see, this is the. I just have a question. He's 21. He's a grown man. And then yeah. he proceeds to say, Oh, but I didn't even get to see the. Yeah. Meaning Dick, my yeah. body. And after telling him, like, No, like, I'm not going to send it to you, he kept on asking for pictures and videos of body hair. And me the only, the now, need... only question I have is, like, he has pictures of everything else. I would have liked to see the picture where you said you were 16 and he continued to engage. I feel like that's, like, really important. If you've established, like, the uh, ability and the. Um, intuitiveness to take pictures. The next thing would be like, I took, a, I told him I was sixteen. He's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna keep going. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I, I, like, show me the tap, show me like a screenshot of that. You know what I mean? Um, do you think James got off on texting young men without asking because he was in a rush? I don't even see. This is one of the things. I don't even know if he didn't ask. I don't even know if he didn't know. You know. Uh, 
And that's, just, uh, I guess, I don't think that he cared. I think that, do you want me to, I, honestly, I think James Charles is 21 and he's in that area where he's in a very immature sphere, which is like online drama and other bullshit. And he probably didn't really care because he's probably still felt like, oh, that was inappropriate. He didn't really give a shit, you know? But like at this point, you get like one pass on, I didn't know their age. At this point, now you have to ask. You know what I mean? Like you fuck up. Let's say you're 21, you fuck up, you forget to ask age. Okay, I'll give you a pass. From this point on though, you don't get that excuse anymore need to remember something. Addressing criticism had been effective for James Charles in the past. During the Tardy situation, he simply explained his side, and because Tardy's cancellation attempt was so pathetic, James's audience forgave him and everyone quickly forgot about it. This time, however, the allegations had substantially more weight behind them and weren't nearly as pathetic, yet James probably still thought that if he simply addressed the criticism again, everything would go away, which Maybe. isn't what happened. James Charles would post a tweet reading, there's a video going around about me on TikTok and Twitter of So, okay. A guy calling me a groomer, and I want to address it right away. The not for nothing, I don't think 16 and 21 would be like a grooming scenario. Grooming is like, I don't, people just say that it's a very deep, methodical process of manipulating somebody and setting them up for sexual um, exploitation. Getting somebody's Instagram or getting somebody's Snapchat very quickly and then like sexing with that person, that's not grooming. It's inappropriate and it's wrong. It doesn't mean that it's like grooming. Grooming is not just um, sexing with people. Like a, tw like a 40 year old having like, or, raping a 15 year old that's not grooming that's as rape you know what i'm saying like the the grooming isn't just the act of sex it is the you, you don't even necessarily have to sleep with the person it's just the setting somebody up for sexual exploitation through like a deep methodical like um like just a deep like level of methodicalness i guess you'd say it's not just grooming is just thrown around like it's just a fucking word Accusation that I have groomed this person is completely false. Last week, I came across someone on my Instagram explore page, saw he followed me, and added him on Snapchat. The next morning, I woke up to several snaps from this person being excited I added him back, saying he loved me, and also lewd photos of himself in the shower. And that's probably true. And here's the thing. Like, this guy... Listen, I, I believe that there's probably... It was mutual back and forth. The thing is, is that, like, it doesn't matter if the other guy was willingly engaging in it. Willingness doesn't equal consent. Like, just because, like... Oh, this uh, 16 year old messaged me and he was doing willingly engaging with me. Like, let's think about it. Like, a 15 year old can willingly engage with a 25 year old, but it doesn't make it consensual because the 15 year old doesn't have the capacity or ability to consent to a 25 year old, right? So, the willingness is irrelevant. Just because the guy was flirting back it doesn't mean it's okay, right? So, it doesn't matter if he, whether he was or wasn't going back and forth with him. Right? I asked how old he was right away, and he told me he was 18. Does he prove that? So I started floating back. Can he prove that he said he was 18? Later in the day, he said a few things that made me question the validity of his original age answer. And when I asked him to confirm his age once again, he admitted he was 16. I told him I was really uncomfortable and apologized for flirting, but he insisted on continuing talking, saying it could be our little secret. He's a fan of mine and would never tell anyone. I told him I wasn't okay with this. He started getting upset, and at this point, I unfriended him. We haven't spoken since. However, okay, is that, can we verify that information? One thing that gets me here, I remember reading this. Um, is that I would never knowingly engage with anyone underage and put my life on the line for a few snapshots because the situations like this instead of uh, where was it? Oh, maybe let's see. Well, after after false allegations like this in the past, I would never knowingly engage with anybody underage. So like this is like the second time. So if you didn't actually ask the age, you you're, you're kind of past like that point where you've already gotten it wrong. Like oh, I I got I got somebody lied about their age before. Yeah, so now you don't really get to play that game. Um, but did can he verify this that the person said they were eighteen? And then it didn't say that there were 16 in the guy's bio beforehand, because you can edit it afterwards. I'm just wondering. I told him I wasn't okay with this. He started getting upset, and at this point, I unfriended him. We haven't spoken since. However, the other person involved would respond to the tweet, stating, James, we both know I blocked you. You never asked for my age. After I told you I was 16, you proceeded to ask me for nudes and said it didn't matter. You called me hot and said I wish the timeline could speed up so you can be 18, attaching a photo of his block list with James Charles on it. Okay. It's just... Like, yeah, I, I believe you can block somebody after they blocked you. I don't really know. I don't really. Is that how Snapchat works? Can you block somebody after they've blocked you? Is that possible? I don't know how Snapchat works. I really just don't know. I really wish he would have said he would have taken the messages of their age part. That part should be easy. Um... I just wish there was more screenshots, but okay. The issue with the whole thing was that their interaction had taken place on Snapchat and therefore yeah. limited evidence existed for either side of the argument. It was James's word against some random 16 year old TikToker's word.
True, yeah. Like, I, like we said, like, this is a very heavy accusation, so there's some details that we would need flushed out. Sure, the kid had evidence of James asking him for inappropriate photos, but it's impossible to know if this had been from before or after James found out that he was underage. Yeah, it's, yeah. In all honesty, James's argument seemed to make way more sense. He stated, I would never knowingly engage with anyone underage and put my life on the line for a few Snapchats. James had everything to lose whilst the TikToker had everything to gain. And at a time during which influencers were being cancelled left, right, and centre for talking to minors, it seemed almost unthinkable that James Charles would be dumb enough to knowingly risk exchanging photos with Guys, a Nerf miner, by the way. With a 16-year-old. However, when three other individuals would come out stating that they had a similar experience, James decided the argument would become impossible to believe. Anyways, he goes, um, send me a shirtless picture. I, I think this might have been, and I could be wrong, the guy who lied. I don't remember. But I think, I think so. I think, I think, I don't know. I don't remember specifically. Like, okay, whatever, I don't care. So then he starts going, oh, send me pictures of uh, your boxers. Show me what you're wearing. Wait, things start to get really weird because he said he asked me for pics of this thing over here. Individuals such as Ethan Klein from H3H3 Productions took to Twitter in a post reading, congratulations to James Charles on his Kids' Choice Award. It's great because kids have always been his choice too. PS Nickelodeon please keep an eye on him during the after party, while others such as Keemstar would go so far as to state that James Charles should be put in prison. I'm going to go off on James Charles today. He needs to be put in a cage, all right? I wonder, do we think somebody that's 21 talking to 16 year old should be put in prison? Maybe, maybe arrested. Some kind of punishment because it's not, it's, it's illegal. Yeah. Okay. I guess I can agree with that. I am so done. Before going on to state that there were too many examples of this happening to dismiss each occurrence as an accident. How many times does this need to happen for us to stop saying, oh, well, James got trapped. James got tricked. Like yeah, how many times until we can say, oh, wait, maybe James is intentionally doing this. Just maybe, you know, just a thought out there. As James's name was being dragged through the mud, the methods by which he could earn an income began to disintegrate. He'd be removed from the YouTube partner program, meaning he could no longer earn ad revenue from the platform. His incredibly lucrative makeup deal with Morph was terminated or while he was yeah you know what's fucked up about that so the he had the Morphe palette and I remember going to Morphe my wife my and I were in the mall we went to Morphe store palette was 50% off that's how desperate they were to get rid of it so I bought it because listen I know a good deal <laughs> you know what I'm saying I know a good deal so I was like fuck this motherfucker I'm gonna buy it 50% off. Great deal. Excellent palette, by the way. Excellent palette. My my younger 16-year-old cousin loves it. No, um, no, I bought the palette. I mean, I bought the palette. It's a nice palette. It's just a fucking scumbag. It's one representing it. <laughs> super ethical. What do you want me to tell you, dude? It was 50% off. Super ethical. Super go fuck yourself. How about that? Okay? I'm taking the deal. Okay, one man, one, listen. I'm sorry, you know, that's what I did. Okay, Jesus Christ died for our sins so that we could all benefit. And these, these young kids, they had to see James Charles Wiener just for me to get a, a decent deal, so. Jesus Christ, I'm fucking tired. These jokes are a little edgy. <laughs> okay. He was removed as the host of Instant Influencer, but not before he teach those on the show how to do a fake apology video. Take this from me because I've had to deal with this. As an influencer, when you grow a following, you will either say or do something what? that people might not like and might not agree with, and eventually you might have to apologize. So for today's compact challenge, you guys will be filming your very own apology video. Which is... Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. And surprisingly, what James Charles would post next. Hello, everyone. James Charles here, and hello, sisters. Today, I'm going to be making a very important video about a very important topic. Feeling the heat okay. from the whole situation, James Charles would upload a video titled "Holding Myself Accountable," in which it include all the classic fake garbage designed to make it seem like. Okay, so I don't know if he talks about this, but I'm pretty sure some of those accusations were fake, and that's one of the reasons why Def Noodles got hit so hard because Def Noodles was promoting these fake accusations or something. <coughs> so I don't know how many of them are real. And we didn't really flesh all them out. Um, because obviously you have to go into every single accusation specifically. Like James was morally righteous. Today's video is going to be from the heart and most importantly, holding myself accountable for my own actions. First and foremost, mm -hmm. I need to say sorry. I fully understand my actions and how they are wrong. I think it's important that I provide a trigger warning for this video. Followed by James blaming the motive behind his actions on desperation. And I couldn't understand yeah. why relationships were the one outlier. Why were they not working? And I finally, finally came to a Guys, I, I did this inappropriate thing because I was really, I, I was depressed and I'm quirky. Guys, the reason I talk to a 16 year old is because I'm a quirky neurodivergent minor adult, really. I'm just quirky. I couldn't find a boyfriend, so I decided to talk to a 
child boyfriend. I don't know. You know, a man friend. You get what I'm saying, though. Like, I couldn't find a man friend, so I went for boyfriend. You get the point that I'm saying. Conclusion. And it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. Whole apology just felt really wow. fake. And I'm That's taking so this sad. very, very seriously. There's no you know what's honest, though? That's actually seems like it's not fake. Um, you want to know why? Because only a fucking idiot would have used that as a defense. You have to be either honest or fucking dumb. Guys, I'm desperate. Guys, I know I'm 21 and 22. And I talked to that 16 year old because I'm desperate. It's probably what most pedophiles would say because a lot of pedophiles, well, he's not, I don't think he's, he's not a pedophile. They're 16, he's 22. It's really inappropriate, but he's not like a pedophile. Or if he is, this isn't an example of that. I'm just letting you know. But I'm so desperate I'm going after people of a very inappropriate age. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's only an idiot would have to make that argument. No evidence proving that he wasn't in the wrong. And it seemed as though the goal of the apology was sympathy rather than a structured dismissal of the allegations. Yeah, he did the video by stating that he planned on taking a little bit of time off. I'm going to be taking some time away to reflect and further. You see EDP said he was desperate. Yeah, that's a lot. Like a lot of times people like pedophiles, like EDP is a pedophile. Uh, 13 year old girl, couldn't be me. Um... That's like a lot of times they are desperate, but that doesn't make it okay. He said he was lonely, yeah, because he's a disgusting fucking animal. That's why he was lonely. He's a fucking disgusting piece of shit. Um, yeah, I mean, thirty and thirteen is much different than like twenty-two and sixteen. I still think this is inappropate. I don't think that the James Charles is a pedophile, but you're thirty talking to thirteen-year-olds. You're a fucking pedophile. Um, so educate myself on these topics i think at this point it's really important that i do so so i'm able to follow through with my word and prove to you guys that i will be a better person also adding that he didn't uh, plan on simply okay. forgetting about the incident my expectations are not to i think in here he said that some of them were fake you know press post and then forget i remember watching it i don't remember how much i remember get about it and move on and wash my hands as if nothing happened because something did happen and what happened was not okay and i don't want to just forget about it yeah this was probably one of the dumbest things that he could have said when involved in drama it's best to be passive about it if you're going to be dumb enough to acknowledge it say something brief then move on the longer you dwell i it's a very interesting sunny v2 has a very That's a very pragmatic way of looking at people's responses to drama. Because from a pragmatic perspective, from a logical perspective, he's not really wrong. In drama, it's best to be passive about it. If you're going to be dumb enough to acknowledge it, say something brief, then move on. The longer you dwell on it, the more your audience will say that it's a big deal to you. It'll he's not wrong. It's just very interesting, his perspective. It's like, here's my advice. If you fucking do something wrong, don't really worry about it. Don't talk about it logically it's there i think that a, a heavy part of a cancellation isn't just that what people are saying about you it's also what how you feel about what they're saying and how it reflects on you and your content so sunny v2 is not necessarily wrong here but it's just like bizarre advice it's like it's it's not like ethical advice like my ethical advice is to like honestly own a situation um and do the right thing you know and with your apology be genuine but his advice is like just don't really talk about it and like from a YouTube success perspective, he's right, but it's like really morally bizarre to me. It's really weird, you know what I mean? It's just it's it's very interesting. Uh, Sunny V 2s perspective on things is very interesting. It's very interesting. We we, are, we already know if he gets canceled, he's gonna be ready to, to to get out of it. It also didn't help that James would take three months off YouTube after uploading his apology video. It probably did actually help. He probably thought that his audience would interpret this as, oh, James is away from YouTube working on himself. But in reality, it just felt like this dude just used his crappy behavior as an excuse to get out of three months work. Uh, I don't think anybody thought that at all. <laughs> okay, that's a, nobody thought this guy used his crappy behavior to get an excuse out of work. I think what he was actually doing is like, I'm going to take off for three months, let everything blow over and then come back and pretend like nothing happened. That's actually what his expectation was. And then the reality is, is that kind of did work. Nobody was like, this guy's just, this guy just doesn't want to work. I wrong wrong i don't know i don't know how else to, to say that really wrong you're just wrong about that uh weird when james would return he was still talking about the drama as if he hadn't moved on over a quarter of a year later that's probably the wrong way to come back but i also think it would be ridiculous and irresponsible to try to just come back to social media and pretend like nothing happened and move oh he did say he was gonna do this he wasn't just gonna say nothing happened he was gonna come back and then yeah modern regularly scheduled makeup programming so i do also have some pretty serious topics to discuss in today's video as well being what happened a couple of months ago in the process james would look trigger warning sexual assault mm. you also have some pretty serious topics to discuss in today's video as well i don't know if i'd call this like sexual assault this is like uh inappropriate interactions at this is the thing is that Probably everybody who engaged with him did it willingly. I'm just saying, from everything we've seen, they did it willingly, most likely. 
but it's still inappropriate. So it doesn't matter if you do something un. It's just because somebody's willing doesn't mean that like they can necessarily give consent, and it doesn't mean that it's 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 it doesn't make it right. Like we said before, a fifteen year old can engage willingly with a twenty five year old. Doesn't make it right. It doesn't like it doesn't make it consensual, right? Um. So I would. So that was why was I making this point? Sorry, I'm really tired. And move on to the regularly scheduled makeup programming. So I do also have some pretty serious topics to discuss in today's video. Oh, I was saying I don't know if it's necessarily I don't know if I'd categorize this as sexual assault. Maybe with on the spectrum in some capacity. But these people weren't like no offense, sorry, but like these 16 year olds, they're not gonna they're probably not gonna have like a traumatic experience with this. If they, that would be a massive outlier. Uh, a lot. This is it, like that's the reality. It's very common, especially if you talk to women, of like women and like you know, 15, 16 talking to guys in like their young 20s or in 20s. And the, it's pretty consistent that they'd like, oh, they loved it in the moment because like, oh, I'm talking to an older guy. It's just so cool. And then they get older and they realize it was like really like icky and it's like a gross moment for them now. But they weren't traumatized. That is like, that is like a hundred percent of the experience from like for most women, honestly. I haven't seen a single woman say that they were traumatized by it, but they know it's inappropriate. And that's the interesting thing is that nowadays people don't experience these things, which is good because we wouldn't we shouldn't want them to do that. So they don't know like the feeling that you have. So you have like a lot of young people that are like, This is wrong, which it is wrong. And but this is also uh like a sexual assault is best. It's like, well, <laughs> or they'll or they'll say, like, you're, you're traumatized. Like, nah, eh, probably not. It's just like you know it's wrong. Not everything wrong will traumatize you necessarily. Um, but that's kind of like what happens. And it doesn't make it right. Just because you don't traumatize a 15-year-old by engaging with them at 25 doesn't mean that you're right. You're obviously a disgusting scumbag and you're going after somebody young for a reason. You're immature. They're very malleable. Easy to to get what you want out of them. Um, but yeah, man. I'm just I'm just saying. It's a conversation, nuanced conversation. As well, being what happened a couple of months ago. In the process, James would lose a million subscribers while dropping his monthly view count from 150 million a month to around 20 million a month. Damn, that's a, wow, only 20 million? Prior to the drama, it was unusual for one of his videos to gain less than 5 million views. However, since the drama, it's now become unusual for one of his videos to get 5 million views at all. When you search James Charles, I'll take a million video. Shit. I was on Twitter. A solid 30% of the posts are memes about him liking underage boys, while another 50% comprise other miscellaneous posts with a negative sentiment towards James Charles. His reputation. I don't think he's a pedophile again. That's like attracted to like prepubescent children. But. Temptation simply never recovered from what you could argue to be terrible management of controversy. He had opportunity after opportunity to fix his decline. Yet terrible man. It's interesting perspective. Seemed to trip at every single hurdle. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.